Hello and welcome back to Ginger Man. It's been raining for two weeks, so I've not been out much. And today I decided to come to Stenhouse Muir. Look, this is the home of Stenhouse Muir football team. They have just won the Scottish League 2. So I thought, oh aye, I've not been to Stenhouse Muir. I've been to Larbert, which is right next to Stenhouse Muir. But I've not been here. So aye, today's the day. There's no rain, it's half six in the morning and I'm ready to get stuck in. So Stenhouse Muir, show me what you got. Peace. There you go. It's not too expensive either to come and see the Stenhouse Muir League 2 champions. I just drove here real early this morning, got out my pet at half five, um, and just drove straight into Stenhouse Muir. Traffic was perfect. Um, but anyway, what am I going to tell you is that I've not really done any prior research, so this is I'm, I'm coming in cold here. Uh, so I'm just going to wander. But the one thing I do know is Stenhouse Muir just won the league. There we go. There you go. Home of the Stenhouse Muir champions. Warriors, come out to play. This is the Norway stand. I want to go to Norway, for some reason I have this calling to go to Norway. Of all the places in the world, Norway is the place I want to go to. Uh, so, Stenhouse Muir is like a, just like encouraging me to go to Norway. That's what Stenhouse Muir is doing. Nice, this looks like a nice little uh, community football club here. So I'm glad they've won the league. And I'm sure after I've walked around the place, I'll be even more happier that they won the league. Anyway, so, I've not done so much urban Scotland recently, I've been doing lots of um, hills and whatnot, so it's good to be back out here, right in the heart of the central belt of Scotland. Okay, okay. I think if I could just go straight up here. Looks like I've just landed straight into the heart of Stenhouse. Is it Stenhouse or Stenhouse Muir? It's easier to say Stenhouse, but I'm going to call it Stenhouse Muir. Because it is Stenhouse Muir. We'll learn more about this place as I walk around and we'll find out what is, or who is, or where is Stenhouse Muir. All those questions. This is an old cooperative building. There's a wee handshake. Instituted 1861. And I can see Stenhouse Muir Cooperative Limited. You can not see it, but I can see it. And there was a space where there used to be a clock. So if I could say anything to Stenhouse Muir Council, let's get that, let's get the clock sorted. Look at this. Local scenes of Stenhouse Muir, circa 1870 to 78. There we go. A thriving town. And look. There's our community again. I just started planting and uh, growing my own vegetables and plants. And I feel like it's something we should all be doing, or encouraged at least to do more of. Within the community, within our gardens, just, just let's go as communities. Let's just take it all back. There we go, farm foods. Freezing in the goodness. Hello. Well, there's loads happening here. There's big ads though. Look at these. What is this? 
<laughs> I like this. Oh, the Heart of Stenhouse Muir by Alan Potter. The sculpture celebrates the history and culture of Stenhouse Muir. The work comprises of three elements. The cattle, a Highland bull and cow, recall the days when Stenhouse Muir was the premier market town for Highland cattle, which were driven there from as far away as the Outer Hebrides. Wow. The cattle market was the tryst, an old Scottish name for a romantic meeting or date. The cattle are made of cast iron, an industry which is synonymous with the town. A couple of cast iron cows and we get everything we need to know about the local area. Moving on. A bunch of shops here. <laughs> the Funky Buddha, Mong gets stabbed. I think it's a tattoo place. Tattooed, tanned, Turkish barber, tryst, financial. That's a romantic meeting spot if you need financial advice. Bet Fred Greggs, standard 2014 High Street um, shops there. Got some cannons. So we've got we've got some cattle and we've got some cannons. There's nothing telling me why the cannons are here. They're pointing over at Asda. I don't know if that's symbolic, like Greg's or Betfred. I've got their cannons launched towards Asda. So there you go. The the battle of Stenhouse Muir between Greg's and Asda. Irene's florist. Look at all the flowers you can get. Uh huh. Larbert and Stenhouse Muir Heritage Map. Now I've been to Larbert, so I've got to avoid going into Larbert section and stay here in the Stenhouse Muir section, which is here. Ah, this is interesting. It says here in 2008, a 50 million town centre, sorry, a 50 million pound town centre development scheme was completed and opened, which provided a new civic square, a library, and a large retailing outlets for Stenhouse Muir. I want to see more investment so they can get the clock back on the old cooperative building. Anyway, what's the population, you ask? Nine and a half thousand. So that's quite a lot, but not loads. So locally they just call it Steny. So there's the, the Steny Health Centre. Well, the birds are chirping. I see a wee football pitch. Let's go have a wee wander down here and see what's to be seen. There's that word trust in community again. Romantic meeting point community centre. There you go, the trust community centre. You like the word trust around here. And they like the word community. I hope they like the word ginger. Now, in all my days of uh, exploring around Scotland, I've never seen a library with a moat until today in Steny. I find myself at the library with a moat. This is incredible. Every library should have a moat. I don't know if it's as much as a moat because it's not going all the way around, but from this side it looked like a moat. This must have been part of that fancy development scheme, but this, it's got to be Scotland's nicest library, right? Unbelievable. Reading is so important, but equally as important as ducks and nature and plants and all that goes with life and learning and beauty and all of this stuff. There's a swan just chilling. This is one of those little hidden gems that unless you just come right into Steny and wander around, you'll never find the Swan Moat Library. I'm calling it the Swan Moat Library. Yeah, yeah, following development of Stenhouse Muir Town Centre, the Lido was remodelled in 2006. It was planted with native aquatic plants 
in 2009 to help maintain water quality and provide cover and food for fish, birds and insects. Yeah, pal. Listen, I don't want, I don't want your food. I don't want no bother. Just come to look. You mighty fine beast. There you go. You heard it from Falkirk Council. Don't feed the ducks and the swans bread. Just attract seagulls, and then. We have this, the, 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 you know, the classic seagull versus swan battle, and no one's a winner. No one's a winner. All right, that's a sunrise. So we got here: Domino's, a Black Rooster Pharmacy, another Bookies, Card Factory, and a Butcher's, and then Asda, just to steal away all the business. I just got to work out, like I said earlier, how not to head into Larbert round here. There's a whole push for shopping local here, which is lovely. But the irony for me is the main attraction's Asda. So, you know. Wrist Road. There's Mr. Rice. Famous Mr. Rice. I've not had a Mr. Rice before. Happy Cottage. Aha! I was wondering where it had gone and then I turned to my right and there she was. Oh, is it locked? Are we not allowed in? I think there's a protected, beautiful spot that you're not allowed in. It looks nice though. Ah, that's why the gate's locked, because it's the Larbert East Church of Scotland. And this episode is Stenhouse Muir. Oh, there's farm foods again. It's a matter where I go. I always seem to stay in the site of farm foods. Let's go into the streets of Steny up this way. It's so nice being out early, this early in the morning and it's so bright and light but yet yeah, quiet, peaceful. So, as I investigate my map, I feel like Stennis Moor is going more down this way rather than continue going up this way which will take me towards Larbert. So we need to go this way. When you're in these urban jungles, they, they're very hard to navigate around. I find myself getting lost more in housing schemes than I would in nature. There's the Lodge Karen 139 Masonic Hall right here. And up at the top it says Masonic Hall. You find is most of the Masonic Halls that I've noticed are all they're heavy, densely populated in the central area. The more west you go, it seems like the more Masonic Halls you're seeing are active Masonic Halls. But I don't know enough about it to really talk about it. Look at that morning sun. You wouldn't believe it if I told you. But I'm back at Farm Foods. I always see a big empty space like that and I think, look at all the fun stuff that could be happening in there. 
I don't know what right now, but if you give me five minutes to think about it, I'd come up with something. So I've nipped back to my car to have a wee uh, read of something because it's quite noisy and windy outside. Uh, and I've learned a couple of interesting facts about Steny. Here we go. The stone house from which the village took its name was a Roman building on the north of the Carron River Valley known in later centuries as King Arthur's Oven. King Arthur's Dutch Oven. It is no longer to be seen, having been demolished to rebuild a dam on the River Carron by Sir Michael Bruce of Stenhouse in 1743. The stones were swept away in a flood soon after. Detailed drawings had been made in the 1720s and a replica was made in 1763 to serve as a dovecote on the roof of a stable block of Pennacook House in Midlovian, and this remains. The site of the original building has been localised to the garden of a modern house on a housing estate, apparently by the American academic Norma Laurie Goodrich. There you go, it's quite, quite random. Anyway, Stenhouse Muir became home to the Falkirk Trist from 1785, one of the largest gatherings of livestock farmers and buyers from all over Scotland and beyond. After the decline of the Trist in Creef, the Falkirk Trist came to be held more frequently on the second Tuesday of August, September and October each year. Also, interestingly, um, the town was home to the McEwan's Toffee Factory, established in 1922, who made both traditional toffee and also the Wham Bar. There you go. So, George Michael's got a lot to be thankful for here in Steny. Anyway, I'm going to have a wee drive down this way and see if there's a woodland walk. Cross this line because I think this is Karen and we have to stay in Steny today. It's in my contract with uh, Falkirk Council. I have to stay in Stenhouse today. But we can still come and see this underpass art. Right, well, that's uh, this is all a sort of dead end. It's just if you want to see me walking around housing estates, I'm going to need to find another point of Stenhouse Muir for the drone. But before I do that, I want to thank my patron legends whose names are coming up the screen now. Thank you all for being the best supporters of the Ginger Man. More, t more content coming up very soon. If you also want to join the patrons, get your name in the episodes and uh, access to all the extra content. The link is in the description below. So I've done a bit of driving around and there's loads of streets just with names like Gary Avenue, Bob Street, Dave Crescent, just names. Um, but what I, I did really notice is it's just a lot, a lot of houses which it's hard to, it's the hardest stuff to film is walking around streets where people live because really you're just intruding on people's kind of privacy I guess, I don't know. But this is what I've seen. I don't know what that says, Esto Perpetua, is that Latin, Greek, time kiosk. There we go, can I go in? Can I go in the time kiosk? I like this. all about the history of the local area. I feel like it's all about Falkirk and Carindale and other areas, little about Stenhouse. That is actually a post box, that is a real post box, and you can't go in it. The FMF Iron Shows, is this some sort of fun? What people do in the local area? 
Alec, a fun fictional illustrated adventure story set in a parallel dimension where products made by the Falkirk area iron industry return to Iron Town. There you go. This one's for you, Uncle Gerald. Look at this. As if we burn it runs through some lovely trees. It's the Stenhouse Muir's Woodland Walk Burn Graveyard. So yeah, I look on my map and it says that we're still in the, the area of um, Stenhouse Muir. I don't know if I came to this cemetery when I was in Larbert. But it's a really nice, beautiful, well-maintained uh, cemetery here. Tell you what, there is something really peaceful, reflective, calming about the graveyard. I just had a nice walk, <coughs> wandering through, thinking, you know what? There's no egos in a graveyard. Everyone's dead. It's all just stories now. Um, yeah, and then it made me think, like, the time that they all existed. This, like over this space of time, you know, the 17, 18, 1900s and how quick everything's going now the speed of everything it's going too fast there's too much of everything, isn't there? everything's becoming saturated and becomes meaningless like I was thinking recently about content and uploading content and short form video content and actually it's, it's destroying people's attention it's saturating anything of value. Um, I'm not saying people shouldn't update or upload consistent and loads of short form video content, but there's, I don't know, there's just something empty and soulless about it all that takes away, I don't know, the, the beauty of life, I think. To you know, where where's the meaning then? We've never noticed the Falkirk motto: "Anna for a." I don't know what that means. Anna for a. Anna for a. I'll need to uh, Google that one. Anna for a. The grassy field. Where does it lead to? I did see that there was some sort of golf activity happening on. Wait a minute, is this the woodland walk that I've been searching for my whole day? The burn continuing out from the graveyard, very, very full burn. Boggy, soggy, wet. I swear, it's got a mad windy. I should have got the drone up at half six this morning. Oh, it's a lot sunnier now, but it's a lot windier. Hopefully it settles down soon. Soggy, boggy, soggy, soggy, boggy. So, I don't know if this is the, the main Stenosmere walking route. Follow the burn. Just follow the burn through the bog, come to this bit, um, and you'll find more grassy fields. There's not much more to say here. There is a lot of houses in Stenhouse. It is very densely populated with houses, so there's little opportunity for uh, big green spaces. But the area you're in, you know, outside of the, the, the built up area, there is lots of greenery. As I say, you've got views of the Yokos somewhere. I can't see them, but you can see the Yokos from here. That's mad. 
it's just turned nice and calm now. It was windy for about, oh wait, I can hear the wind coming back. Oh. I shouldn't speak. Just walk over the soggy grass. See, when I was a kid, I used to love jumping over burns. This is a good burn for jumping. There's loads of cool wee bits you could jump over. Not that I'm encouraging kids or anyone to go out jumping burns, or adults or grannies. Eh, just dogs. Dogs can jump burns. They eh, get minging, but they love it. Anyway, what am I saying here is, eh, you can find fun out of anything when you're a kid. Just a burn. Even as an adult, you know, it's more just enjoyable to watch the water flowing eh, rather than jump across it. And I like to picture where a big beautiful tree swing might be. There you go. I do like a cheesecake. I think I might go in and try one. And there it is, award-winning cheesecake. I've not been able to get the drone up. It's still windy, but I have got a bit of cheesecake for breakfast. I don't know what you're thinking. Ginger man, that's not a healthy breakfast. But don't worry about it, because I'm doing a lot of walking, so it balances out, think about it. Maple Avenue, that's making me hungry. Mm. I made it back to the car to try my cheesecake with, of course, Iron Brew, a Caledonian cheesecake. Let's keep it traditional and Scottish. Um, if anyone's wondering how I get the rustic look to my beard, it's just, um, you just have to drink a bit of Iron Brew every so often. Caledonia cheesecake right here from Stenhouse Muir. Cheers. Mmm. 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 Mm-hmm. I think I'll eat the rest when I'm home. I'm not much of a morning eater. But I had that hunger feeling, but once I had a, a bite of cheesecake, I feel all right. Anyway. That's uh, going to conclude my day here in Stenhouse Muir because mostly it's, as I say, it's all just a lot of houses. There's the nice town centre, um, there's there's the working history here, but mostly there's a sense of real community, real impactful community. Um, the football club doing well, they're going into Scottish League One next season. And, yeah, you're right in the heart of Scotland here, so there is a sense of real work in Scotland at its core. And I've had a really nice morning walking around. It's now 25 to 9. I've been here for two hours. Um, it's Easter holidays, so I guess that's why it's so quiet, um, which suits me. Just a shame it's windy and I didn't get the drone up. But I will be back to this area um, throughout my travels, there's other sections of Larbert Stenhouse Muir that I have to, to uncover as I explore this area further because I kind of just set it on my sat nav and drive in and then I'm here. And also Falkirk, the big one, I've not been to Falkirk yet, which I know um, a few people have asked me to do. So that's one that will be coming up later in this year, so keep an eye out for that. But aye, thanks for having me Stenhouse Muir, it's been a good morning. I'll enjoy my, I'll enjoy my cheesecake when I get home. Anyway, thanks for watching. Peace! Well, it was a lovely to see you. It's the end of the show. Bring on tomorrow. Where shall we go? Where shall we go? Say goodnight to the ginger. One last ice cream for the bearded man, the stashy old.